All set. We good? Okay. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Mark Hyman from Greensboro, North Carolina, and you are watching The Best Practices Show. Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Show where we take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over the world. And I have a crazy huge treat for you. One of my favorite people in all of dentistry. This guy's one of my mentors. He's taught me a lot and you're gonna see what kind of an expert he is. He's heard it all, seen it all. You guys get tough questions all day. As a dentist or as a team member, you get them all day long. We're gonna throw you the hardest questions you get every day and great answers, home run answers to them with somebody who's been in the trenches for a very long time and has heard it all, Dr. Mark Hyman. You do not want to miss this. Now, couple show notes. We are shooting this live on Facebook. So as you're watching it, if you have questions, add them to the feed right away and I'll ask Dr. Hyman himself and we'll get the answers straight from the expert. You're also going to see this guy's a crazy expert at social media. So if you're watching these later on, we're watching the metrics on this. Some of you watch them late at night, early in the morning, whenever. Add questions continuously to the feed and you'll see he'll give you a good response and a very thoughtful one to all your tough questions. Again, thank you again for all the um, feedback. You guys are keep you keep sending us suggestions for shows. I got a ton of them. I even got some this morning. We're lining them up all as, as much as we possibly can. You'll see those over the next couple of weeks and next couple of months. And thank you for so much for the shares. We are now up over 39,000 followers, over 150,000 of you on iTunes. I don't even know how that's happening, but all I can say is thank you. Now, my guest today... I get another huge thank you because like I was a timid little kid when I got onto the lecture circuit and I sat next to you one day and you kind of like put me in a headlock and said, you'll be all right. And I was like, okay. And uh, you and I have been friends for many, many years. I watched you um, just out on the lecture circuit. We're always at the big meetings together, Dr. Mark Hyman. I absolutely love having you be one of my friends and mentors, but if people don't know who you are, let's start there because we've got dental students watching this now. We've got an international audience. Who is Dr. Mark Hyman? And if, if they don't know who that is, I'm guessing they've been living under a rock. Kirk, thank you so much. Always a joy to see you and um, just worry when you haven't taken your medication because <laughs> you're just a madman. It's right but here. This is it's always it's in this big white cup every day. Your, your wife fills it up and tries to put you down. I got it. <laughs> I'm, I am Mark Hyman from Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm just a guy fixing teeth. I was born in Greensboro. I went to undergrad at UNC Chapel Hill. I am a Tar Heel. Went to dental school at UNC. You can see my shirt as I have cleverly labeled. I am a Carolina dentist. Uh, probably have the record at UNC Chapel Hill for being the worst first semester dental student in the history of UNC. I was our class president. I was coaching mural football, playing intramural basketball and soccer and dating a dookie. Tell very <laughs> few people that. And midterms came and I forgot to study and I got slaughtered. And the first week back, Thursday night, first week back, spring semester of dental school, I quit dental school. Really? And I'm sitting in my apartment trying to cry and nothing would come out. And the only way I could go to sleep, Kurt, was to say this nightmare is over. I quit. Mm -hmm. I went to see the dean the next morning and told him I'm going to quit. He said, great, go into class, come back at halftime, we'll sign you out. And I went slinking down the hall of UNC School of Dentistry and ran into a young professor, Dr. Ron Strauss, who saved my life. He said, Mark, being a dental student is nothing like being a dentist. Just give it another hour, give it a day, see how you do. And I had a decent morning, went back to tell the dean I wasn't going to quit. And he was disappointed. Mm. may he rest in pieces <laughs> and then i got my way through the rest of the first second semester dental school started in clinic that summer caught fire and i graduated dental school in three and a half years wow then i joined american dental volunteers for israel i went as a volunteer dentist for four months to the state of israel worked just on a kibbutz a cooperative farming community just north of the sea of galilee right at the foot of the golan heights and i did 
kibbutz dentistry and also worked up at the Lebanese border in a children's clinic. And I grew a beard and I grew my hair long and tried to look like the brothers and played basketball every afternoon. It was a hoot. And it was a pretty profitable trip because my last week there, I met my wife. And as of February, we've been married 33 years. So awesome. she's very tolerant. Then I went back to UNC, did a two-year hospital residency. It was oral medicine, hospital dentistry, where we kind of did specializing in each aspect of dentistry. A couple of months of oral surgery, maxillofacial pros, pediatric dentistry, sedation dentistry, physical diagnosis. And then I bought basically a bankrupt practice in Greensboro, North Carolina, and started July 1st, 1986. Mm -hmm. And I did everything wrong. And the receptionist quit six weeks after I started. And I had to fire the chain smoking hygienist. And I had one employee left, and it was a nightmare. And then the good Lord smiled upon me because I went to a Linda Miles seminar. Mm -hmm. And Linda listened to me whine and moan and complain and said, well, why don't you try this, that, this, that. Gave me five little ideas. Next month, the practice doubled and then doubled, and then doubled and doubled. So God bless Linda. Mm -hmm. Ran into Kathy and John Jameson, who became my dear friends, coaches, and mentors. And uh, then life just got good. The practice kept growing and booming. And um, two neat things happened. In uh, October 1989, Ron Strauss asked me to come back to the dental school and tell my story. Tell the story to the first-year dental students who were struggling just like I had. And uh, I was nervous, Kurt. I had diarrhea. I'm nauseated. I'm going to go back to speak at the dental school. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually, I, I haven't told very few people, I, I was out of gas. I work the morning. I jump in my car. I'm out of gas. I drive to the gas store, fill it up. I jump back in the car. I hear a rip. I have ripped my pants. Oh, my no. To my tush. <laughs> I'm like John Belushi in Animal House going back and forth saying, God, what do I do? I'm late for the talk. So I ran home, got another pair of pants. I thought, you know, there'll be a podium. They won't see my pants are ripped. Got another pair, drove to Chapel Hill 90 miles an hour, run into the building, run into the lecture hall. Everybody's sitting there waiting, and there's an empty lecture front of the room with, except a metal folding chair. And it, I'd have been mooning Miami if I hadn't changed pants. Oh, my gosh. And I ran to the front of the room and said something, and they laughed, and I said something else, and they started clapping and howling. And I finished, and it was just staggering. And Professor Strauss came up to me and said, you just got a magic moment there. You don't get many of those. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know what that was, but I want to do that again. And that was the beginning of my speaking career. And in 1990, in January, Dr. Reed Clark from Greensboro and Dr. Gene Grubb and I went to the Pankey Institute in Key Biscayne, Florida. And that's when my dental world changed because I was probably doing more single tooth dentistry than any dentist in the state of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. I could get anybody to say yes to one tooth for a filling. Yeah. But I really didn't have any sense about comprehensive optimal care dentistry. You talk about it in dental school, but you never get to practice it. Right. So Dr. Erwin Becker from Pankey took me under his wing. So my time at Pankey, getting a fellowship at the Academy of General Dentistry, my mastership at the Academy of General Dentistry, my time with the Dale Carnegie organization, the single most important thing I did inside of dentistry was going to Pankey and Spear Education. Outside of dentistry is my time with the Pankey Institute. I'll say that in my seminars, gang, why would you want to study material titled how to win friends and influence people, mm -hmm. how to stop worrying, control stress. So it's time tested material that just is life changing. So, uh, I got very fortunate. So I went from two and a half employees to when I left the practice, December 14th, we had 17 employees. So the practice, yeah. we transitioned the practice to former UNC student of mine, Dr. Steve Hatcher, Dr. Sonia Sharani, two superstar dentists. And now I'm teaching at the dental school at Chapel Hill on Mondays and Tuesdays. And doing my so a little bit of consulting and doing my seminar stuff and just loving what I'm doing, Kurt. I, I miss my patients terribly mm -hmm. and I miss my time teammates. Um, my receptionist, Mary Catherine, was with me 25 years. Mm -hmm. My lead dental assistant, Tina Calloway, was with me 19 years. Three of my hygienists were with me 14 plus years. So you don't get that level of love and loyalty just by accident. And I just had so many people put so much into me. So one question that Carnegie will ask you is, have you earned the right to speak? Mm -hmm. And I know I've earned the right to speak, Kirk, because I've been there. I've been in there. I've been there quitting dental school. I've been there in the gutter with my private practice spiraling downhill. I practice in Greensboro, North Carolina. People said to me, Dr. Mark, this all sounds great, but you can't do this in my community. Our three biggest employers in Greensboro were furniture, textiles, and tobacco. So those industries have been slaughtered. Right. 
And with that, every year I practiced, the practice grew. And uh, just from paying attention to these principles, having a continued education goal, and following my heroes in dentistry. So I'm very honored and humbled to be back on the Best Practices show. You had me <laughs> on a year ago. I was show number 37. Now you're up to how many? Uh, 155. So, Lord, and uh, then just, you just, you're a madman, Kurt, and you're an important voice in dentistry. And well, I want you to stay healthy and keep rocking because you need to be heard. Hey, I appreciate so, this. Well, there's not a lot of things I'm good at, but I love talking to people. So that's cool. Now, Mark, go back to this because I love this whole journey. And as you're, you know, if I'm a 32 year old dentist watching this, help me understand why it's so important. You hit these forks in the road. You talk about dental school, like dentistry is hard. Getting through dental school is a, it's, it's like a, it's like an obstacle course or military training, then getting started on your own. And then even when you get out on your own, you hit, you know, you're going to land on your face a few times. How important was it at these forks in the road to find the right people like Erwin Becker, like Kathy Jamison, like Linda Miles, like how important is that? You know, it, it, it's not everything. It's the only thing you have to have role models. You can't reinvent the wheel constantly. Very probably problems that you've had in your dental practice, in your life, someone else has had a similar version or a worse version just when you're feeling sorry for yourself. So I think it's an important thing to have heroes, coaches, and mentors. During my time in private practice, Dr. Kathy Jamison, we had a monthly phone call, a leadership phone conversation. We had a marketing conversation with their marketing team every week. We had six days of in-office coaching. So every four months we had two. And that, that's a practice that was in top 1% in the country. Right. So everybody needs a coach. Michael Jordan needed coach Dean Smith and Phil Jackson. Tiger Woods could have used a different coach maybe, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's, just, let's edit that out. But sure. um, it's all okay. you know. So I yeah. practiced for 19 years in a 1950s dental building. And then as I say in my seminars, lovingly, I got fired. Yeah. My partner in the practice, we worked together eight and a half years, a woman dentist, fantastic. I see her, we hug and kiss, and life is cool, but we decided to practice apart after almost nine years. And man, I didn't want to start over after 19 years of private practice. Right. And it was the best thing I ever did. And all new equipment, new attitude. We brought in Jameson to help us. The whole thing just was amazing. Yeah. So, um, if someone is hesitating, if you're hesitating about buying a piece of equipment, every day you wait, you hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I'm, I'm militant about. I'm concerned about dental education in this country, that there isn't enough emphasis on photography, that we verbally are telling our students, can't you see that 10 microns on the distal facial in number two? They can't see it, and neither can you. And right. then we're telling patients, you need a crown. And that leads to so much more because of the fact we talked about this before. Brother Bill Blatchford brought this to dentistry saying nobody needs anything. Amen. So yeah. in our practice, we had eight operatories. We had eight DigiDoc cameras. I'm not here hawking product. It's an American company. It's owned by Dave and Brett Wilson. They're great guys. I bought four versions of those cameras. You're going to end up spending $21 a day for every day you practice for a year to guarantee you're going to add $1,000 a day. Right. So the simplest thing, you guarantee your listeners a $200,000 increase in the next 12 months. You get a camera and you take a picture on every patient before, during, and after. And that is the liberating moment. There's storm clouds over our profession. That's yeah. for sure. There's the storm clouds of the insurance and DSO, DMO, and non-dentists doing irreversible dental procedures on people. And again, I'm respectful how people choose to practice. I'm just respectful for where you practice. But if you want to have a practice that is based on relationships and communication and high tech, high touch, and a tremendous level of case acceptance, there's some basic fundamentals that you have to hit. And yeah. to me, that's getting great coaching like ACT Dental or Jameson Management, paying attention inside and outside of dentistry and getting state of the art equipment and committing to use it every day. Right. So that's, that's the secret to my success is there is no secret. It is hard work. It's investing in your practice. Uh, I had a colleague in town, a young dentist, who kept coming up to me, dental society, saying, well, man, I could be as successful as you, uh, but I undercapitalized. You know, Dr. Mark, yeah, you got it all going on, but, but I undercapitalized. I'm like, well, capitalize. Quit telling me your sob story. Yeah. Get out there and do it. You know, this person told me, she bragged she took six months writing her own software for her practice. She basically reinvented Windows, Microsoft Windows, and took her six months to write the software program. I'm like... 
you could have bought it for what a hundred bucks and, and, <laughs> it and prep some teeth. You wasted six months yeah. trying to save a penny. So I, w I want, I know the best practices listeners are of abundance and not scarcity. And I hope they take this to heart and just say, there's some simple fundamental precepts of highly successful practices and do what I did is just copy the best of the best. And that's how you end up sitting here talking to a superstar like Kirk. Oh, stop. Well, there's no successful hermits, that's for sure. And you you mentioned Linda Miles, who we both absolutely adore. I've heard you say this. If there was a Hall of Fame in this industry, she'd be the first inductee. And there's absolutely. no question. And I remember calling her when I was so stressed out. And she goes, that's dumb. Stop doing that. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my gosh. She goes, I have been doing this for a long time. You are wasting hundreds of hours. I was like, oh, it was so... Could you imagine going on for years and years and years, continuing a behavior that's not helpful? And she did it in one phone call. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So it's crazy important to reach out for help because running a practice, I mean, as a practice grows, it doesn't get easier, right? When you add all these ops and team members, does it just get easier every day? <laughs> no. I mean, I, I miss the days when I had three employees and a team meeting was in my car. Uh -huh. When you go from three to 17 and booming – um, bigger isn't always better. So I have no regrets. I got to practice different types of dentistry, different phases of my career. And, uh, and I loved it, but I just so appreciate you. You kind of hit the nail on the head. You could have paid Linda miles, $50,000 for that phone call. Right. Cause it was worth it. It was. You say, would you only talk to me for a minute? And she would have said, it took me 40 years to figure out in a minute what you were doing wrong. Right. So that's, that can sort of lead to an answer to some tough questions as well. When people say, well, that didn't take you very long. Well, with, you know, the janitor comes at five o'clock, he'll do it for half the fee. And so anyway, there's just uh, dentistry is a joy, Kurt. I love, love, love my practice career. I do miss my patients terribly and I miss my team, but I'm getting to teach and mentor the next generation at UNC and still doing the seminar thing. I just spoke for Phillips in Nashville Monday and Tuesday and that just... A amazing group of handsome young men and gorgeous young women all fired up mm -hmm. about all the cool new things going on in dentistry and all the great things we can do for our patients because that's what it's all about. Yeah. We're wasting our time if it's only about us. Win-win means we take exquisite care of people and we're richly rewarded emotionally and financially. Amen, brother. Amen. And today we're going to be talking about the, you know, the nightmare questions. And, you know, after you had those experiences with Jameson and you went to the Panky Institute, what happens, I'm guessing, and you can speak more to this, is you start doing more comprehensive work, which exposes you for higher levels of conflict possibility. And you know these questions come. And if you're a dentist watching this, we're going to go through each one of them. Mark, tell us the evolution of some of these questions, because you can take these questions one of two ways. You can get really defensive. Absolutely. Or you can embrace the questions that are going to come at you every day. So talk about the journey of getting better comprehensively and why these questions come at you. I, I can do that. Again, I think Frank Spear says it beautifully. You only treat what you can see and you can right. only, you know, well, if you don't know, you can't treat it. So there's a, there's a process there. If, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If all you have is your little round hand mirror and you're trying to look at the distal facial number two, you got nothing for you diagnostically or for the patient. So again, I found as I learned more and grew more, I had more confidence to answer these tough questions. And uh, also I grew a thicker skin because um, Dale Carnegie, my instructor, had an expression, doesn't mean you're not a pretty dress, you're just not my size. Wow. Everybody's not a good fit. Everybody's not appropriate for your practice. And right. it is okay. It's absolutely okay. 300 million some Americans, half of them go to the dentist every year. Mm -hmm. We can just raise the utilization 1%. We're so busy, we can't see straight. Yeah. So the fact is, and Kurt, you've seen it in your act practices, I'm sure. Haven't you? Have, I don't know if you've totaled roughly how much production was sitting in each practice's diagnosed and undone treatment. It, it, it Roughly a half million to a million dollars a practice. Would you agree with me? Oh, easily. Of diagnosed and undone dentistry. Yeah. So you Pete really Dawson don't used to say there was. Yeah, he used to say there's a practice within your practice, probably two practices within your practice of undiagnosed dentistry. Do you know what I so mean? Part, so, Part of it is di completely diagnosing when the patient's ready to hear it, and yeah. that's key. And also you Im improving yourself. We talked about Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People last time we spoke. Yeah. 
that I went to a Covey seminar in 1989. It changed my life. Habit five, seek first to understand, then to be understood. Just life changing for me. But I think habit six is sharpen the saw. Right. Because if you're sawing away using your 1980 dental school training, dentistry's changed so much since then. Just adding the implants and Invisalign and soft tissue management and CAD CAM and CBCT and sleep medicine dentistry, whitening, power toothbrushes like Sonicare. For God's sakes, people say, well, we pine for the golden age of dentistry. Your mama, this is the platinum age. This is the diamond age. Why in the world would you want to practice without all that technology and without that knowledge? Right. So that's just, that's obvious to me that you got to keep learning and growing. And that's one of the, been one of the coolest things for me when I've been at Panky or when I've been to at, um, at Spear and you see a doc 60, 70 years old and they're all fired up mm -hmm. and you just go, that's kind of cool. And I hope I don't yeah. burn out and leave dentistry. I hope if I ever get stale that I'll go back to the well, I'll go back to continue education. Yeah. I'll do these things that keep you young and keep you hopping and growing. Yeah. So that's a huge opportunity. It's awesome, buddy. It's awesome. So let's dive into some of these tough questions. You know, I got a bunch of them here, but can oh, I, God. Get, cause I get Hit the same me. questions you do now it, it, as a dentist, how many times a day do you get these questions? Like, can I just ask like when you're practicing almost every day with every patient or, you know, I, Back in the day, I got them a whole lot more. But as you sculpt your practice, you end up getting rid of a lot of the turkeys. Okay. So that you get less of it as you go forward. Then you get new patients who haven't been inculcated to your practice philosophy. But I spoke about my buddy Keith Phillips before, who's just a star in dentistry. And he had this beautiful expression, your patient is always right. They just don't have to be your patient. And it's true. Yeah. Your patient is always right where they are in their life at this time. They just don't have to be your patient. It's okay to say to them, what you need is not what I do. Right. And let them grow elsewhere. Let them go torture someone else. But uh, I got to a point in my career, Kurt, where it just, I, I liked the conflict sometimes. I liked the challenge. I liked mm. using, going into my reserve ammo and energy to say, how can I figure out the answer here? During my seminars, I do tell a brief story. This woman, um, Linda, comes to see me, and I'm on a first name basis. And I said, "May I call you Linda?" And she said, "No, you don't know me well enough." Oh. And I was like, "Whoa, uh -huh. chief concerned man, why are you here? I've had a bad experience with dentists since 1975." And I'm like, "Oh God!" And then she takes out her hearing aids and sets them down on the bracket table and looks at me. <laughs> And Kurt, I got nothing left, man. Yeah. So I just looked at it and I said, I started lip syncing. Uh huh. She looked at me and I said, and she looked at me again and I said, and she starts howling, laughing, and that was it. <laughs> I pulled the thorn out of her paw. But I mean, I'm, I'm there dangling, saying, I got nothing left. Right. I had a bad experience with dentists for the past 40 some years. Her yeah. dad was her dentist. She hates going to the dentist. May I call you Linda? No. Yeah. And I was like, uh, you, yeah, okay, I don't know where to go from here. So I just thought, well, she's out of here. I may as well just mess with her. And that she became one of my all-time favorite patients. She'd walk in hugging everybody and bringing us gifts. And it was a joy. That's awesome. So, so, I mean, it's almost cliche. People are going to resist as we go through these tough questions and these angst-producing questions. The best minds in dentistry have helped find some ways around it. You're not going to win every time. You're yeah. not going to knock it out of the park, but it's sure fun trying. It is. It is. That is so fun, man. So let me throw you one of them that everybody gets every day. And you mentioned this. Um, can we watch it? Or so the, phrase so the that genesis. Of, right. So can we watch it? Because traditionally you'll say, Kurt, you need a crown. And uh -huh. you'll say, can we watch it? Because I heard Kathy Jamison say these eight magic words, how do you create the sense of urgency? If you haven't created the sense of urgency, gang, you're going to get that question, can we watch it? There's a temptation to kind of be a smarty and say, well, watch it do what? Right. But I want to caution people and always answer a tough question with another question. Kurt, can I ask you a question? Sure. How would you feel if we watched it and the tooth continued to split till it went through to the gum line? 
So try to, if you don't have the evidence, you need a crown on the distal facial and number two, you've got a crack. They can't see it. They don't own it. As crass as it sounds, if they can't see it, you can't sell it, close it, treatment plan it, whatever you want to describe it as. Right. So that's my hope for people is you put a color photo in front of them. The verbiage I'll say in my seminars is you put that DigiDoc photo in front of your patient, show in the crack and just look them in the eye and say, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And so if you're watching this, you'll get a chance. This is why this guy's a master is that your questions are, aren't the questions that come at you aren't always answers. The questions that the answers you're giving back are questions. And I've heard people say this before that the question is the answer. So you're getting patients to think about this before you deliver an answer instead of just saying, you know, here it is. Is that, is that how you, you, Spot because on. you do want to get them engaged. You don't want to just de deliver an answer because they're going to tune half of that out anyway. You don't want to be a smarty. You don't want to be offensive. Right. You don't want to chest up to them. Right. But on the other hand, you see clearly they have a dramatic change going on that right. they haven't owned yet. So if you've used your evidence, if you show them the cracked tooth and they say, what's that? The temptation say, well, that's a vertical crack that goes through the enamel past the DEJ. <laughs> so I'd rather you answer saying, what do you think it is? Right. Here's the white, healthy enamel. Sir, do you see this vertical line? Right. What is it? Sir, what do you think it is? And they'll say, my tooth's cracked. You need to fix it. Right. Then if the next thing you say is, let's get a pre-denial from Aetna, I'm going to smack him. <laughs> like, don't do that, man. Yeah. I says, do you... You need to fix it. Uh, my next answer is you want it done in gold or white. Morning or afternoon, give a choice of two yeses or look at them and say, in fact, we just had a change in our schedule, which means we're going to prep it right there. The assistants aren't getting lunch. We're sending out for turkey sandwiches. And bam, you just added 12, 1500 bucks to your schedule. Yeah. On average, minimum, Kurt, my team added $2,000 a day to my schedule. All right, go back to that. Same, go back to that. Same day dentistry. Because we were equipped, we were prepared, everybody was dancing in the same direction. Yeah. Now, and when there was an opportunity, the patients never more preheated, when they went from, can we watch it, then you really create the urgency. Take the camera, show them a healthy tooth, say, this, see how gorgeous this enamel is. This tooth has some nice features. However, do the give and the take. This has some nice features. However, it's just past its expiration date. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Is that what you want to do? Would you like me to help you save time, save money? Why would you say yes? I had a senior, it was a former Harvard professor in the office, mm -hmm. showed him this tooth. And I said, sir, to help you keep this tooth, we would secure it with a crown. Mm -hmm. And he said, a crown? I can't possibly do a crown. And I thought, <laughs> my God, I've killed him. Uh -huh. Now the temptation is to say, well, sir, you don't value optimal care dentistry. Well, but you have insurance. It'll pay half. Instead, I said, well, sir, can you tell me why? And he said, I'm going out of town today. I won't be back till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, sir, if I can put a Band-Aid on this tooth, then can you come back tomorrow? And he was like, sure. Mm -hmm. So that, that was just amazing to me. Yeah. Crazy. It's crazy. Now go back to you. You gave us a huge pearl. Of, you give them the options of two yeses. Explain that. The temptation again, you need a crown. And once they've started to buy in, do you want me to stick a needle in your gum? Do you want me to put a burr in your mouth going 450,000 RPM? No. Mm -hmm. Do you want to keep this tooth the rest of your life? Yes. So they say, okay, my tooth is cracked. Then instead of asking yes or no's, well, do you want it fixed in the morning or afternoon? What's better for you? Right. So you're asking, you're leading them towards the yes. Mm -hmm. If I could secure it right now, Sir Kirk, do you have a couple minutes? I know you're a busy guy. You've got a gorgeous wife, brilliant wife, and fabulous kids. It, it, you drove an hour to my office. I got you right here. You got a couple minutes. Can I right. secure right here? We've been a CAD CAM office, a CERAC office for 21 years. We, If the patient says yes, we can rock and roll. Right. And the other thing is, too, the underlying thought process that you guys have is you assume patients are going to want your care. Sometimes dentists might be watching this going, well, Mark, that's just too suggestive in my office. You know, we always ask people if they want to do that. I think what you're talking about is a, is a huge mind shift that people are coming to you. They want your services. They want what you can provide. And that's a key piece in everybody's journey in dentistry. I think isn't the word assumptive. Right. Like an assumptive sale. Right. And what I want to say to the young docs watching, help, help me understand, troops. 
Are you tackling people at Walmart and Costco and saying, don't you want dentistry? Or did they walk into your dental office? That's so true. People yeah. walked into your dental office. Isn't that showing a buying interest for some level of health care? They're calling you know your office. It, they're calling and they're your already office. in. Yeah. They're saying they're showing you some level as I want to keep my teeth. Right. So then you just give them the privilege of saying how healthy you want to get, how soon you want to get there. Yeah. Can we watch it? You can do anything you want. Can I ask you a question, Kurt? If watching it means that your twelve fifteen hundred dollar crown has a chance of becoming a six thousand dollar extraction bone graft custom abutment implant, mm. how would that make you feel? Mm. Yeah, not good. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> for, for for us to make bonus, I'd rather do the six thousand. But seriously, right? I put it right back to the patient. Sir, can I ask you a question? If delaying this increases a chance of you getting a slow, painful root canal. How would that impact your life? Right. Oh, God, it all want one of them. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. again, Pete came to my office preheated, Kurt. We did not accept HMO PPO plans. We were mostly a word-of-mouth referral practice for my entire career. Till the very end, the biggest referral I had was Dr. Google. Mm. Yep. We had 1,200 five-star reviews on one of the microsites. We worked with Solution Reach, was, was just huge. And right. they pushed reviews to our patients. And I would set the table prior, saying, Kurt, can I, may I remind me, how did you find out about our practice? Because I went online, you said, I went, best Dennis Greensboro, you had the highest number of five-star reviews. Yeah. Kurt, would you do me a favor? When we finish today, you're going to get a quick email with five questions. Would you do me a favor and lie? <laughs> talk about how great Tina is not the old fat man and they go oh, uh -huh. you're not fat but I'd say if you think this was five star service would you honor me sir and take two seconds and make a note online yeah. to honor me and my team if anything here today isn't superb would you please tell me right away right. I don't want to go on and read it so I planted that seed with new patients right up front this is going to be a five star experience I dare you to catch me with our shorts down yeah. Look around the team. Is it immaculate? Are the magazines straight? Is the music nice? Are the plants wa watered? Is there toilet paper in the bathroom? Are people introduced? Do they act like they know you? Are there please and thank yous, gentle injections, smoothies after procedures, before, during, and after photos? We had a predictable system. We had eight ops, Kurt. We had eight isolates. We used to isolate on every patient, every procedure. We buffered our local anesthetic with Onset. On Pharma was the product. Costs about two bucks a patient. For right. them to be numb in about a minute and a half instead of 15 minutes with a mandibular block. Yeah. So the general injection, communication, love gifts, phone care phone calls. So again, as the practice grew and like people sent like people, you had less of those PETA patients. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let me dish you another nightmare question. I love it. I love it. What you uh, got? Well, my last, didn't, my last dentist didn't tell me about this. Why didn't my last dentist tell me about this? One of the all-time yeah. awful questions that we hear. And so when I try to teach my students at UNC, when you don't know what to say, look at the patient and say, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. It's a great stall answer of all time. <laughs> so you could say, well, sir, that is a good question. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Did they have this technology? Uh -huh. Did they show you a picture of your tooth on the monitor? Well, no, that must be brand new, isn't it? I said, well, sir, in our practice, we used intro cameras since 1991, but we have eight operatories. We have eight DigiDocs. Everybody gets a picture here. So I'm sure your dentist did the finest he could do with what he had in his office at that, at that time. Mm -hmm. And dentistry's changed, thank God. When you were young, you probably went to a dentist that had that belt-driven handpiece with a rat running around to power it. And all we had were mercury fillings and braces were train tracks and Dentistry's changed so much. I've grown as a practitioner. Isn't it great that I've got new stuff to offer you? Yeah, absolutely. I remember dentists having ashtrays. Remember that? They used to have ashtrays yes, and I without do. gloves, and they would smoke while they were working on your well, teeth. Now they have that in Colorado for anesthetics, so that's good. <laughs> and that is one of the that is one of the questions now on a lot of these preclinicals, which is so interesting. Are you? That's so funny. So wait, now go a little bit deeper into that one because. You know, as you introduce, you're going to, you're going to have patients and you can't discredit the previous dentist they Absolutely had, right? Not. Okay. Well, because you don't know the circumstance and the fact right, is right. I had a circumstance at the end of my practice career where I, it was questioned, why didn't I offer somebody dental implants? 
Mm-hmm. Instead, I did a bridge. And at the end of my career, I was doing very few bridges. That's because their chief concern is I'm highly allergic to metals. Like, well, implants are titanium, and that's a metal. So if you can't have a metal implant, then we'll do a bridge. Right. But she didn't tell that to the next dentist who then mm-hmm. asked me, why, did, why didn't I do implants? So it was embarrassing to me, but I was like, because you didn't get the whole story. Right. So that's part of what I would, again, offer to our young listeners is be careful. And take careful notes as your patients discuss things with you, but don't buy everything. You don't believe everything your kids tell you because you, there's always two sides to the story. Absolutely. And so you just have to recognize that the patients uh, rarely know what you're doing. There's a statistic that only 3% of your pra- patients have any idea what you're doing for them technically. It's right. all the experience. So patients will say, well, where was, where was your crown? It was right here. And like, no, it's the other side, but they get it mixed up. They don't know. Right. You, know, we could, you could survey all your docs that you work with at Act Dental, Kurt, and ask them without looking to chart all the restorations in their mouth, and they'll go, I haven't looked. I don't know. And yeah. we're, we're the dentist, so that's, that's crazy. Yeah. So you can always just say, why did my last dentist tell me this? It's a good question, sir. I wasn't there. Yeah. I, I don't know what you discussed in this office. We discussed everything with a color photo. So you and I are looking at the exact same thing, and right. we have the same point of reference. Love it. Absolutely love it. Now, uh, here's another one that comes at us all the time. Every time I come in here, you guys are trying to sell me something, or you're trying to suggest something new. What's t- give us some thought process on that one. The genesis of that is that is the first thing I heard when I got back from my first Panky class. Okay. And I'd been to Panky for the first course, and I was on fire, smoking, bouncing off the walls. I was so fired up to deliver high-end, relationship-based, optimal care. Mm-hmm. Check the 8 o'clock hygiene patient. She needed a DO on number 13. Mm-hmm. And I did my best job explaining the power of that DO on 13 with right. all my Panky skill. And she said, every time I come in here, it's something else. And I was like, face plant, Mm -hmm. but it's okay. And so again, that's a good time to re-remind people that the teeth you brought in today are different than what you brought me five, a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. And what I know in this office, we do continue education all the time. I go to a hundred hours of continue education, seven hours, of course, a hundred hours a year. We read books, we watch tapes, we watch the best practice show. We're always learning and growing. We have consultants that come in here. So I'm always, hopefully, I'm offering you a higher level of dentistry. Sir, can I ask you a question? Is that what you want or not? Mm -hmm. Would you prefer I do old school 1980s dentistry on you? Right. Again, you don't want to be aggressive with people, but you always want to compliment them. You can always revert to the feel felt found. I understand how you feel. Other people have felt that way, but they found when I, they looked at the picture with me, when they looked at the x-ray, when we just looked at the cone beam together, then they found out why this was urgent to fix. Yeah. Now, now so go back it's, to that it's an awful question to hear. Yeah. In over 20 years, that's, that's also, it's been taught by a lot of the greats is the feel felt found. Talk about the progression yep. of those three things, because there are going to be some people watching that, that have never heard this before, but it's a, it's right, a so very important thing. As um, I understand, feel felt found, you start with a cushion. Someone's angry. Right. Man, every time I come in here, you tell me there's another crown that needs to be done. Sir, I understand how you feel. Mm-hmm. Other people have felt that way, but they found once I had the chance to do a comprehensive exam and look at the entire mouth and write a whole treatment plan, they appreciate that. I've asked you three times to come in for a complete exam, and you haven't. So when I see you, I'm doing my, the finest dentistry I can with the limitations I feel you've put in front of me, would you give me the permission to come back for a no charge hour where we can go tooth to tooth and I'll show you my best guess what your next 10 years are going to look like. Would that work for you? Yeah. So that when I, Kurt, when I've been bit in the butt career wise, it's when I've seen somebody and jumped into treatment without a complete exam, without comfortable financial arrangements, without having a chance to study the x-rays, talk to my specialists, in my 31 and a half year private practice career, that's when I had teeth marks on my tush because I, I compromised the system, which said you do a complete exam as best you can. You study all the material and you give things time to marinate. Yeah. One of the great things I heard Frank Spear say from Panky, I pushed people as hard as I could to accept optimal care, a complete exam. 
and right. a complete treatment plan. And correctly, Erwin Becker, Gary DeWood, Steve Radcliffe, Frank Spear, Greg Kinzer would say, everyone's not ready to hear it. Right. So it's okay to filter people through. If someone just wants a cleaning, I was more militant early in my career. They just want to get their teeth clean. Well, you can give it to them and say, in this practice, we're, you got a wedding. It's Wednesday. You got a wedding Friday. I understand. We'll clean your teeth. Yeah. But then we'd love for you to come back and let's do a complete exam so we can help you save money long term. We can help you achieve your goals for your health, your teeth, your smile. Is that what you'd like? No, I just want a cleaning. Then you say, God bless. Keep in touch. We're here for you. Right. And I'm, I, I'm sure you and I were in a, a lot of those early courses together. And I heard Frank Spears say this probably 15 years ago. And I'm going to paraphrase it, but it was a pivotal moment. He said, one of the most freeing places you can be as a restorative dentist is to detach yourself from how you think a patient's going to respond. You're not responsible for how they respond. You're only responsible for the truth. And if a dentist gets that, they're like, okay, don't your your commitment is to tell them the truth. Let them fall where they may on that uh, response side of things. It, it, the the permission statement is key to me. Right. It's Kurt. You tell me, sir, how healthy you want to be, how soon you want to get there. Right. I've had people say, Doctor Mark, only exam. Look with me. Look with one eye. I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm not. I, I, you don't get to come into this office and not get an oral cancer exam. Right. Right. Not get a TMJ exam, not get periodontal probing, full mouth probing every year. Yeah. We alternate full mouth probing and the radiographs. Someone says, I don't want it. I don't need it. You go, well, you certainly don't have to get anything you don't want. Let me find you somebody that'll do that for you. Yeah. It's okay. You can say you can stay in this practice without an exam and without x-rays if you're willing to do that professionally and liability wise. Again, I reached a point in my career with the team as they were, they would screen people on the phone if people were just kicking tires. I mean, I had one person walk into the office and he looked around and said, I'm not paying for this. And uh -huh. he walked out. I'm like, well, thank you. I didn't waste my time on you. Yeah, which means, you know, leads me to my next nightmare question, which you get, you got all the time and dentists get every day. Some of them are getting this question today is, why are you so expensive? So without being smart, again, I would love people to consider answering that with, that's a good question. May I ask you a question, sir? Mm -hmm. Expensive compared to what? what well, a crown's a lot of money. And I was like, okay, imagine you charge $1,200 for a crown, mm -hmm. right? Right. It, is it $1,200? No, it's $100 a month for 12 months. It's $25 a week, mm -hmm. right? Right. It's three bucks, four bucks a day. It's just, it's a cup of Starbucks. So I try to ask my young colleagues when it's time to present care to break it into something palatable. Mm -hmm. My blessed pop, Jer, has been gone four years now. He said, son, you can lift an elephant if you cut him into small pieces. So you break it into small pieces. Kurt, can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. You just said the dentistry is expensive. Is it important to you that you keep this tooth the rest of your life? Yeah. Would it make sense to invest about $3 a day for a year to keep this body part? Is mm -hmm. that what you'd like me to do for you? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Can yeah. you see what happens when you nod when you're talking to somebody? <laughs> I, can't, I can't help it. Just, like, is this what you'd like me to do for you? <laughs> if this crown lasts three years, Kurt, you paid a dollar a day to keep this body part. Does that seem like an investment worth making? Yeah, it sure is. You know, and it's, it's not going to work on everybody either, but why is it, you know what, optimal care dentistry is expensive for a reason. Yeah. It's hard to get the training. Right. We had a million dollars of furniture and equipment in my office, at least. Yeah. We had eight, eight, eight operatories of eight deck equipment, eight Digidocs, eight Isolites, two Serac machines. We had lasers. We had Cava bombs in the hygiene room, lasers in the restorative rooms. It cost a fortune to equip a high-tech office. Yeah. We had a cone beam in the office and a microscope for endo. Yeah. You know, it's a multi-million dollar investment so that you can deliver exquisite care for somebody so they can keep a body part the rest right. of the life. Ultimately, quality, uh, comprehensive dentistry is a bargain because it doesn't have to be redone every two years. Right. Absolutely. So that's, that's an yeah, important point. Bottom line is you got to believe that money spent in your office is some of the best money people could ever invest, which is the overall... Um, thinking in this whole process. Now, let me give you another nightmare one. Can hey, I get a second opinion? It could, sir, that's a good question. You can do anything you want. 
Okay. May, may I provide you a second opinion right here? Let's go back to the video. Let's go back to the monitor. Let's look at the picture. Let me sh let's show you a couple teeth that have no problems, and this is what I identified. Sir, would you agree this, this first tooth I show you looks beautiful? Here's my concern. Mm -hmm. it, what, what, what other opinion are you seeking? Okay. What if somebody says, hey, look, I just want to go to another dentist, you know, you which will happen? It's my, it's my privilege. Uh-huh. And just let, it, let them go, and, and then they'll, would, they'll would do their do thing a, and come back? Would you do me a favor? If you go to their office and they don't have a camera, walk out. Because mm. we're not talking apples and uh, apples and apples here. Right. If somebody looks at that tooth and says, we can watch it. Well, it doesn't hurt. It ain't really broke. It's mm -hmm. just a craze line. Then we're not dealing the same cards. Right. You're not playing in the same, playing, same playing field. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you're not a dentist, but would you agree with me? This has a crack in it. Right. Now, the fact is, it's your body part. You can leave it that way the next 10 years if you choose. It may last. Or tonight when you have dinner, it may split in half. Right. If that happens, Kurt, I'll feel badly. You'll feel worse. Yeah, absolutely. Lee Brady always tells a story. She says, I'm, I tell patients what's going to happen. You know, you're going to choose not to do this and it's going to break. It's going to break at some time. And she says, patients call her. All the, you already, you told me this was going to happen. I knew it. And Lee's a brilliant woman. So um, I love that. I love Lee, that is, Lee is amazing. She's the new chairman of education at Panky. Yeah. She is a star. A thing I will say to Kurt when they, if they want to leave, they have a broken body part is, Kurt, I promise you when you call me, when this splits the rest of the way, I will never tell you I told you so. Mm, very cool. Now, let me, let me couple that nightmare question with a second phrase of it or a second. Can I get a discount? Can you give me a discount? I'd say, well, Kurt, I appreciate you asking. Would you? Our fees absolutely reflect the quality of care that we do. If I charge you half, would you like me to leave half of the cavity? <laughs> now you can't. I'd, please be cautious using that one. Yeah, if you've got a relationship with somebody. You can play with them a little bit. Or I've heard this one. You, tongue in cheek is, I can I can give you fifty percent off, but I'm gonna have to charge you twice as much. Have you heard that one? I don't know. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> the old bait and switch. Right. But you know, you can say, well, we, our, our fees are set to reflect the quality of our care, and we use the finest dental lab, and we have a million dollars of a furniture and equipment here. It's right. dork them. You can just say it absolutely is an investment. Right. Because I promise you, this is going to be the finest crown that can be done in this community. Yeah. And I will not rest until you love it. I had a point in my career earlier where I had a couple people say, because we asked people to pay. One of the things I hate for the profession, Kurt, is people say, we'll pay half when you start and half when, I'm, when you're finished, when I'm happy with it. And then you're set up for a failure. Mm -hmm. So when we had any... We'd say, people, you have three ways to pay. That you pay, pay a week before, you get a 5% bookkeeping courtesy. Day of the race, use your airline charge card. You write a check, you get a book, you will give you a bookkeeping courtesy. Or our financial partner, Care Credit. Right. I'll pay interest for six to 12 months. Right. Uh, a couple of years ago, we put $400,000 on Care Credit. It was unbelievable. People mm -hmm. said, I mean, Dr. Mark, you just lost $40,000. I'm like, no, I did 360000 that I may have not been able to do. Yeah. But for to say, well, I'll pay you when I'm happy, it's coercion. Yeah. And so we would have people pay before the, they would pay before we would start. And if they resisted, then we just wouldn't start because I'm not right. going to be, I'm not going to be held hostage to that. It's got to be trust. It's win, win or no deal. Right. Right. So for young, young docs, accounts receivable will crush a practice. Yeah. It Absolutely. used to be a mindset in dentistry. Well, you have a healthy amount of receivables. No money in the bank. We, people are not happy when they owe you money. The color of your crown isn't quite as good and the margin isn't as smooth and the bite doesn't feel right. So you need to get the finances out of the way right up front. Yeah. And, and Greg Tarantola, who was a great instructor down at the Institute, used to say this. It's, it's not about the money because when you get the money up front, it creates greater um, – consistency or predictability as you look yep. at the rest of the process. You find that to be true? Absolutely. And it, it just, other words, other words, there's a coercion going on. There's a lack of trust. There's a gamesmanship. I can speak to experience because I had a patient first year of practice, second year of practice that had been to 
several dentists and said, you know, I've had two bridges and I hate them. Mm-hmm. And I said, sir, I guarantee you I can make you happy or you don't have to pay. Wow. Boom. He got his bridge and said, I don't like it. And he left. And I'm like, yeah. well, that was a, that was a very cheap continuing education course right there. Cause I never did that again. Yeah. Now, can I piggyback on that word? Because you get this question Please. too. Can you guarantee this dentistry? What's your guarantee? Kurt, I guarantee you I'll be here for you. Uh-huh. I guarantee you I will do the very finest I have. And if there's a challenge to the work, if something happens, then I'll be fair with you as you're always fair with me. Okay. I promise you I stand behind what I do in this office. I'm going to ask you to floss every day. Statistically, less than 5% of our patients floss. Yep. If you're not going to floss, there's the air floss from Philips. There's the diamond clean, which you can spend less than a dollar a day to cut out not a whole lot of gum disease. Right. But if you come in here and you haven't brushed and you haven't flossed and you've chewed on ice and I gave you a bite guard and you didn't wear it and then your porcelain crown cracks, we have to be a partnership here. You can't blame me for something you did. We have to help each other out. I'll do my very finest. I'm using the finest lab in Greensboro. Yeah. I worked with Mark Whitaker with Universal Lab. He was a picky SOB. Mm-hmm. And he was an absolute master ceramist. Mark's work is what I show all over the country. Yeah. And uh, the first re- impression I sent him, he sent it back and said, it's not good enough. I said, do you know who I am? He said, yeah, that's why I sent it back. I was <laughs> like, let's, let's have a talk. I said, anything I that. that I send you that isn't perfect, you send it back, I'll redo it. That's awesome. I'll re-impress. Anything you send me that isn't perfect, I'm, pay- I'm not paying for it. Yeah. And we worked together for 12 years. He's a star. All right. I love it. Now I'm going to give you another nightmare question you and I talked You're about. You're making me sweat here, Kurt. I know. Come on, man. I, I, and, and I love I'm this. Hive. Well, these are real questions. And really, Mark, what you're saying is you got to be ready for this stuff. Don't just be ready. Just you got to trust yourself when you go into an operatory and say, these questions are going to come and bring, bring, it, and, bring it. And the team can role play at lunch. Right. You can right. write these down and bring in turkey sandwiches once a month and ask each other these questions. Yeah, because you get the more you practice, the more verbal everyone on the team's got to have confidence to answer these questions. If the doctor diagnoses something, walks out of the room, and what does the patient inevitably do? They do. They look at the hygienist and say, "Do you think I need that?" Yeah. The hygienist says, "No, let's both get out of here. That's not a good thing. <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah, uh, it happens, but not often." Yeah. So now let me what throw another one at you. Like, aren't these fillings poisonous? I read somewhere that all this stuff is poisonous. I read fillings. on the internet that mercury kills. Yeah. You know, I always say I'm, I'm, res- I'm respectful of that. The temptation is to say, well, sir, my four years, three summers at UNC School of Dentistry certainly doesn't supersede your 15 minute Google search. <laughs> but uh, you can't say that. No. So you say, I appreciate you. I love working with patients that have done their homework. And that are researching. The fact is, the finest minds of dentistry have said that the mercury fillings, when they're intact, they're no more of a risk than eating a can of tuna fish. The fact is, in our practice, we quit doing amalgam 20 plus years ago. Right. Because in my mind, you have to take away more healthy tooth to put amalgam in there. We tried to focus and specialize in micro dentistry, starting with a quarter round bird, taking away the minimum amount of tooth, etched bond, and a minimally invasive adhesive bonded restoration with the occlusion correct that's got a great lifespan and it looks great and everybody wins but back in the day amalgam served dentistry beautifully for 150 years we just took it off our menu 20 years ago so i'm not anti-amalgam if somebody says well fluoride i I heard fluorides and rat poisoning Mm -hmm. well i said sir if you take an entire bottle of aspirin you bleed to death if you take two your headache goes away yeah you get two parts per million of fluoride it'll cut out two-thirds of your cavities across the board yeah you take an entire bottle back 30 some years ago a kid died had a bottle of fluoride and took the entire bottle which Mm -hmm. is why fluoride isn't prescribed in that that size dose anymore right so i would always be respectful i would always say well thank you for doing your homework man i love working with patients that are participatory, that are educated, and that help me make, make decisions what's appropriate for you at this time in your life. However, and then tell your story. Briefer's better. Yeah. You know, to say, well, the UNC School of Dentistry says, right. here's 17 refereed journals I'm going to print out for you. Don't do that. Just yeah. 
say my sister, my wife, my mama, my daughter's in the chair next door. Here's what I use on them. And that's what I'm using on you and your family. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Now we're talking about dead- to do for you. Yeah, I'm going to throw in some bonus questions here because I'm having a lot of fun dishing you the tough stuff that I get every day. I need to take a shower when I'm done. I'm sweating. (laughs) Let's let's help the team because the team might be saying, okay, I get this. The dentist and the assistants might get, but I get more questions than they do, you know, at the front. So let me dish you one of the hardest with every front desk person or a team member that answers the phone gets this one every day, multiple times a day. How much are your crowns? Sometimes they don't even say hello. They just go, how much are your crowns? I say, well, hi, I'm sorry, sir. Who am I speaking to? Well, just I wonder how much crowns are. I respect that. But in case we get disconnected, in our office, Patty was our greeter. Patty McDonald, she was a super duper duper star. Yeah. I worked for her for 12 years. Patty would say, I'm sorry, uh, can I get your name? So it's Kurt. And I have your callback number in case we get disconnected. Kurt, I'm thrilled that you called our office. May I ask you a quick question? How'd you find out about us? Mm-hmm. I just want to know how much a crown is. I understand. What type of crown? Mm-hmm. Have you had a root canal? Do you need an implant? Do you want gold? Do you want white? Does a partial hook onto it? Right. Do you want a crown that's made by Mark Whitaker, Universal Lab? Or do you want me to send it to China and get it made? Yeah. The fact is, sir, there are many, many, many different types of crowns in this office. We only serve the finest crowns dentistry have to offer. We would love to get to meet you and talk to you what's appropriate for you at this time in your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. Would you like morning or afternoon? Love it. And you're going right into the assumptive, making the appointment. So yeah. let me let me throw the, another one that's coupled with that. Do you accept my insurance or are you in my network? Now, did you participate for, give us a, some sense of how much you participated, if at all, with insurance in your career? In my career, I never accepted a PPO HMO. Ever? Okay. Ever. Okay. Never. But what we would say is we work with all insurances. We will file all, all insurances. But are you on my panel? And I would say, Kurt, can I ask you a question? Mm-hmm. Do you know what being in network means? Mm-hmm. They don't. Say, for the dentists that agree to be in network means they've agreed to limit the quality of care they can offer based on the restrictions of this plan. Mm-hmm. In this office, Dr. Mark and the team, we as a family have made the decision we would never offer you substandard care based on the limits of an insurance policy. Right. If you want to see if this office is a good fit for you, come by for a 10 minute, just get to meet us, visit at no charge. We'd be honored. Come in the office, look around, say quick hi to our doctor, meet our treatment coordinator and just see, does this feel like something special? Mm-hmm. Love it. Love it. You know, are you in network? No click. <laughs> you have no shot. Well, they don't That's know exactly that. what happens. But, 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 but we do a two hour exam and, and I've taken 5,000 hours of continuing education and, and I've spoken with Kurt Barrett at Hinman and Yankee and Chicago and Winter and Greater New York and CDA and ADA. Nobody cares. So what? Yeah. So I would ask the receptionist, the teammates to not answer that immediately to deflect. Yeah. Well, that, that's a good question. I'm sorry. Who, who am I speaking to? Yeah. And how did you find out? I just want to know, are you in Edna? Yeah. Are you in Blue Cross? And then what I would consider them saying, I'm ask you a question, Kurt. Is our partition, participation critical for you coming in? Because mm-hmm. right. a lot of times, like, and I'm just, you know, I heard you're the best, but I have Aetna. Do you take it? We yeah. would love to file Aetna. What yeah. they reimburse you, there's a thousand Aetna plans. I don't know. Right. But I can promise you it doesn't change our treatment plan. Right. Right. Love it. Love it. Now I got sidetracked because th- you, you also get other questions and I was writing down the one that you gave me after the fillings poisonous and I, you, yeah, and I got sidetracked, but what are some of the other tough nightmare questions you get or you got as a dentist in all those years of practice? Do you have your list there? Oh God. What else <laughs> did I have? I started writing it down and I got sidetracked when you were, we were going off on a tangent as we often do. One, th- one thing that I hated And again, I had a level of love and loyalty for my team, which was unbelievable. Uh But what you hate is when every time I come in here, there's a new face. Oh, yes, 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 yes. What's going on, man? And that answer, I hope, is that, you know, when Dr. Mark started the practice, there were two and a half employees. Now there's 17. You know, we still have Mary Catherine here who's been with us 25 years. We have Tina here who's been with us 19 years. We have Carla Jean who's been with us 14 years. And we have new teammates. Back when we merged with Dr. Hatcher's practice, we said, 
the two busiest practices in Greensboro, North Carolina just merged. This is a battleship. Yeah. And it's awesome. The talent in this office now is unbelievable. I can't wait to introduce you to some of our new family members. Yeah. It's great. Because the turnover is painful for young doctors that consider that team salary is overhead, your mama. It yeah. is your investment in your long term success. Yeah. And well trained, turned on, fired up, loyal teammate is a million dollar employee. And that's how right. they should feel every day. Right. You should spoil your team rotten. And, um, Kurt, I have a small birthday coming up. Okay, tell us. When is it? July 24th. I'm going to be 60. Oh, but you're, you're... See, that's when you're supposed to say, Mark, you don't look 60. No, that's you're still in the front place. nine. You're still in the front nine, right? And I'm rounding third, heading home. <laughs> but I, I said that in a seminar, and a woman calls out, mm, 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 looking fine. <laughs> I said, where were you when I was single? She said, in utero. <laughs> Killing me, man. <laughs> Oh, but man, I'm turning 60, and I've already had half my team, my former teammates, reach out. They're going to have a, ta- a birthday din- lunch and dinner for me with the gang I used to work with. And they've been sending me cards and writing because um, it just gets me for I, I had the richest clinical career working with these magnificent women, and they're still part of my life, and they're part of my family, and I'm, I miss them terribly. Yeah, but they're still in my life. And that that's what I wish for your listeners, that you reach a stage in your career where you've made a profound difference in families' lives and your teammates' lives and your own life. You've had a, a rich, loving career and that it's a it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Dentistry is just the greatest profession ever. Do we have storm clouds coming over the profession? Yeah, we do. But name a profession that doesn't. Yeah, but we got great men and women like Kurt Barrett working on these things and inspiring young and old minds. And so uh it's a great time to be a dentist. It really is. There's never been a better time to be a dentist. And having a great team, if you were going to go back to UNC Chapel Hill and you only had one thing to say and the lecture was going to last five seconds right. long, the one number one piece of advice I would give, would you agree with this, is surround yourself with great people and you'll be okay for the most part. Do you agree? I, absolutely. I would absolutely say hire people smarter than you. Yep. Train them and get out of their way. Amen, brother. We had two CAD CAM machines. Our CDAs, our dental assistants did all the designing. I've had doctors say, if they want to design the Cerex, they should go to dental school. I'm like, aren't you 50 shades of stupid? <laughs> you should be in there doing CEO, doctor-only work, and these teammates that are playing with a $100,000 Etch-A-Sketch machine, yeah. then they, they're not going anywhere else because they get to do all this high-tech dentistry. So I, I was gifted with amazing teammates, and I put a ton of time into them and trusted them and got out of their way, and they, they made me who I am today, and I'm very grateful. That's awesome. And family and team and friends like you, bud. Absolutely. And I'm going to have you back so many times on different topics and things to discuss. Um, and I'm crazy grateful that, you know, you are a good friend of mine and I, I learned so much. Now, I'm just going to say this. If you're watching this and you have not seen this man speak, get there, run there, go there. Um, and uh, if you have a study club and you're looking for somebody to motivate, bring some energy, give you a whole new perspective on thing. Get get this guy out there because he can bring it. And it is Thank like you. it is like um, it's like drinking from a fire hose. You're gonna need a seatbelt when you're listening to this guy. Now, Mark, if somebody's watching this, they do want to get you out to speak. Um, and keep in mind, people are listening to this on iTunes too. Where can I go to find more about Dr. Mark Kimer? Right. My speaking website is Dr. Mark Speaks, D R M A R K S P E A K S dot com, Dr. Mark Speaks dot com. My cell phone's 336 456 6728. You can call me, you can text me. I'm teaching at Chapel Hill Monday and Tuesdays, and then I'm a free agent. So bring it on. I love, love, love inspiring dentists and their teammates to have the type of practice of their dreams. So bring it on. I'd be honored. Awesome, buddy. Well, I'm honored, like I said, to just have you on. Thank you. So stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else. But thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate you tuning in today. If you enjoyed today, which I know you did, just do us a favor and hit the share button. Share this with your friends and protect this great profession we call dentistry. Keep sending us suggestions that you want to see on the show, not only with Mark, because I'll get him back here and we'll ask him the tough questions, make him sweat a little bit more. Uh, and then other shows you want to see, keep sending them to him. So are uh, sending them to us. But until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show you guys enjoy the rest of your day